Social media, and our expert today is Sean Smith, social media coach. Thanks, Sean, for coming in. Thanks for having me, John. And it's too bad you left your voice in Victoria. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of talking going on in, in Victoria, for sure. Yeah. So tell us about Social Media Camp in Victoria. Uh, Social Media Camp started in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, this was its fifth go-around, and it is the largest social media conference in Canada. Uh, actually, as of the, the day that we were running, we were the largest north of Texas. Uh, about uh, just a hair under 800 delegates show up, uh, 55 speakers, tons of sessions, yeah. really great time. And there's a Facebook page that uh, you sent me a link to where it had the crowd shot. Yeah. It was amazing. There's yeah. so many people. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it was a really great crowd this year. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it was, it was interesting to see that between 70 and 75 percent of the, of the people that attended were women, wow. which, was, which was great. They're social anyway. This is their platform. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a good segue. We've got some streeters uh, that Marjorie shot of how Campbell River people think of social media. So it's a little bit early, really earlier than we planned. Sorry, Chaz, but uh, let's have a look at those now. So tell me, how do you use social media? Actually, I use it a lot. I have uh, my phone. I decided to join the pack. Either you join in or you're left in the dust. So today, coming here for a walk with my friends, I used it steady. Where are you? To meet up with people whether you're shopping, on vacation, and I use it a lot for my, with staying in touch with my kids, grandkids, Skyping, I love it. I do FaceTime and Skype to keep in touch with people that are outside of the community, um, but outside of that I don't really use a whole lot of it. I do play a lot of games, I do. <laughs> it keeps me busy, but you can also play games with people all over the world, and my mom and my brother and I all play cards together and Scrabble together. So that's kind of what I use it for more than anything. A real way of connecting. It is. A real way. Keeping in touch with people that are sort of up here for the summer and then they go home for the winter or they go down to Mexico. So we keep in touch that way too. I never had a cell phone before. Uh, probably a year ago I got a cell phone. and Now I text most of the time instead of talking on the phone, which isn't good. <laughs> so, yeah. How is it changing your life? Um, well, I, I can get things done a lot better. Like, I mean, you don't have to rush home and make a phone call, and and uh, you can keep in touch with all the kids and my husband. And yeah. Okay. So does it feel like freedom? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you don't have to be stuck to the phone waiting. Yeah. Okay, we're back with Sean Smith, my guest on Talk About, uh, talking about social media. Um, you know, here's the, I guess let's start with a dumb question: What is social media? Social media is a digital version of what we've always done. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of social media because they're, you know, they think that there's some sort of magic behind it. But really, at the end of the day, we are social people. Uh, we prefer to be in a conversation with somebody, for whether it be Marge sitting at the, at the old telephone exchange telling the stories about what they heard over, over the party line. Really, it's not anything different than we've always done. Yeah. The difference is it's now global. Was email the first social media? Uh, no, actually, I was using social media. Well, I was using the te technology back in about 1993, and the real social media was the chat rooms, the the BBSs, those oh, bulletin yeah. boards, yeah. where people were connecting. So I remember the old text days of, of yeah. communicating with somebody on the other end of town. Yeah. How exciting that was! That's a good segue too to how you got involved in this. Uh, local people, of course, will know that. Uh, Sean has been in the military, he retired a while ago, uh, took early retirement, uh, but they were doing electronic communications there. And is that how you got into this? Yeah, I actually I spent 10 years in, in the armor and realized that I was pretty much qualified to drive a heavily armored bus, so I better try something new. So I got into technology and, and communications. Yeah. Uh, so at the time that I started getting into it, I was working in the uh, IT department for the Army headquarters in Edmonton. That's information technology Info for technology, a few, yeah. Yes. Uh, and then as as time progressed, uh, we started getting into into web stuff. Probably in 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 and around the the early 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that time, it was still really new. By the, about 1997, 98, I started to learn how to code websites, uh, the old hand code, nothing, yeah. no no graphics or anything MS like that. DOS. Uh, yeah, the MS-DOS version of the web. 
Yeah. Uh, and because I was teaching myself how to do that, the commander of the army wanted to get into technology, yeah. web-based yeah. technologies, and I is got it, it. Is it true that the internet began as a military application in the United States? Yeah, actually back in the 70s. Yeah. Um, it, was, it started out as a military network. It still is probably one of the largest ones. Yeah. Started down in the United States. It was based yeah. out of MIT. Um, there's a whole bunch of places I could go with this interview, and I hope to go to all of them before we're done. But I've got a question here about spy agency monitoring. Uh, how much do you know about that, uh, like cyber espionage and stuff? Well, you know, it's interesting that uh, a lot of people, it's been a big problem when it comes to security and privacy and social media. A lot of people have concerns about that, and then they have a freak out about the NSA spying on them. Well, the NSA isn't really doing anything really out of the norm, uh, I could do it. But they're I, just doing it better because they're the just technology. doing it better. They have the technology. Yeah. Everybody talks online yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Uh, yet, are they doing stuff that is not yeah. really, you know, yeah. kosher? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. do dig into places yeah. where they're not supposed to be digging. Yeah. But in general, a lot of people are still having these conversations, and essentially, they're in the open. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I do some edgy stuff like about the disappearance of MH370 and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm pretty sure that the, some of the stuff I communicate with is monitored. But, you know, I don't lose sleep over it. No, they neither, don't care. Neither do I. Um, I mean, my con I am, I'm an open book online. Yeah. You, you can pretty much find out anything and everything about me. Yeah. But I have nothing to hide. Yeah. And, and the people that are probably the most upset are the ones who've got something to hide. <laughs> Well, we don't know any of those. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, uh, we were talking earlier about uh, the internet and social media and people have to adapt to it. And, you know, the business people want to use social media to market to China. There's a little problem with that. Yeah, there's a little bit of a problem with that. If Tell us If you're a business it. that's got a Facebook page and you've got a Twitter account and you've got this great YouTube channel, means nothing. Mainland China, it's illegal. You, yeah. you know, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, they're all illegal in China. They use Weibo, Weibo or Weibo Sen. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of, of Chinese created, developed social media platforms that are used specifically, and they're monitored by the Chinese government. Yeah. So as a result, they have control over it, and, and they don't have that same control in Facebook. Yeah. All you have to do is take a look at what happened in Egypt during the, the Arab Spring to understand just the power that that can have. Yeah, it, it is amazing. It's a... Uh, uh, anyway, uh, there's so many uh, avenues. I don't know if that's the right jargon for it, but you know, we've got Twitter, we got Ollie, we got Hootsuite, Facebook. Well, um, Hootsuite is an interesting one because it's based here in Vancouver, and they were trying to develop a kind of a system, I guess, so that people could coordinate all of their Facebook, YouTube in one place. How are they doing? Well, it's a social media dashboard, and okay. you're starting to see more and more of these social media dashboards. I was a, a beta tester back in 2009 for, for Hootsuite, and actually Ryan Holmes, who's the, uh, the CEO of Hootsuite, was born and raised in my hometown. Oh, really? So I actually bought milk from his uncle. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's designed specifically to help you manage multiple social media environments, yeah. they're, and they're not the only one. Uh, Sprout Social is another one based yeah. out of Chicago. Yeah. But the uh, their growth has been huge. Hootsuite's, Hootsuite's growth has been huge. They've yeah. passed about the seven million mark in, in users right now, wow. and continuing to grow. They recently got about 162 million dollars in infusion of, of seed capital huh. to do another level of growth. Part of the problem, though, is that they are so focused on the business growth and development side, is they've kind of forgot those of us who are yeah. the social side and. And I'm actually finding myself migrating away from, from Hootsuite, and I'm actually working with a, a new platform called Meshfire. Now, uh, last night, the Hootsuite put out a tweet uh, saying that they're now offering a free social media guide. I guess if you're starting from zero, that would be a useful thing. But how w w you, I, I would say you have problems with it? No, I, I, th I know that Hootsuite's having a number of problems right now, specifically yeah. on the technology side. They've had a lot of downtime. Um, they're having some issues with some of the back-end stuff. And it's not back always back-end. I mean, all the servers and the technology oh, really? that goes into making this thing work. Because with 7 million customers, you need a lot of uh, you, You've megabytes. got a lot of traffic. You've got a lot of traffic. Yeah. So uh, they've been having some issues there. 
I will give Hootsuite some kudos on the fact that they do a pretty good job of, of creating material that helps educate people. They've got a really good YouTube channel that has videos on how to yeah. use their platform as well as social media. Yeah. Now, you call yourself a social media coach and your Twitter name is that social media guy, is that? Uh, no, actually, I rebranded after the last social media camp uh -huh. uh, to, to being me versus you know that social media oh, guy, okay. which was where I started oh, out so from. So now you're Sean Smith CR. I'm Sean Smith CR. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was a direct result of uh, probably one of the biggest names in the industry telling me I wasn't a consultant. <laughs> I shouldn't be a consultant. And there was that let the air out of my tires moment where, oh my God, Mari Smith said I shouldn't be doing this. And she said I should be a coach. I should be teaching. Hmm. And so I, I yeah. rebranded. I went through a whole rebranding process. Well, tell us about what you were doing in Victoria uh, the, on the weekend. 800 yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, and you got your, you were the most frequent tweeter. I think we got a, a screenshot of that if we can. I don't know technically <laughs> if, uh, but uh, you were one of the most prominent people at that event, I think. And uh, yeah, I, I'm the, I bring the party apparently. I <laughs> <laughs> mean after uh, hours? <laughs> all the time. Oh, okay. All the time. It's a, it's a real go, go, go for, for people like me who get into it. Uh, I was a speaker on a couple of panels this year, um, one of them with the uh, Chief Marketing Officer of Meshfire out of Seattle, and another one talking about uh, social media security and safety with a professor from UVic. Huh. Uh, I was also coaching, I was the lead coach this year for a team of seven coaches. Uh, and this camp is the only one of any social media conference in the world that actually has coaches that work with the delegates. Uh, huh. So if you know nothing about social media, you can sign up to get a coach for free. How many people showed up and knew nothing? Oh, a lot. Really? A lot. How much did not, it cost Not to get cold, in? nothing. Like, we found yeah. one person who had zero presence online. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and she was taken under the wing of just about everybody at the yeah, camp. Yeah. But how much did it cost to get in? Uh, if you get in on the early, early birds, it's yeah. about 250 bucks well, for, for three days. If you wait until the last minute, it's about 400 to $500. Did they sell out like you had to cap it? Um, we came close to selling out. Our, yeah. our target was just about 825 yeah. and we came in just a hair under 800 this year. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's very typical Vancouver Island. There's a lot of people that wait until the last minute. Uh, we didn't really do as good on the marketing side this year because we were so focused on the content. You focused only on marketing. It, it's it's ironic media. that the you social media people mainstream. didn't do good marketing. <laughs> uh, but There's still a role for mainstream media, isn't there? There is. There is. And it's. I, I find it interesting that the social media, a lot of the social media world tends to poo-poo the, the terrestrial and traditional media. And vice versa. And vice versa. Yeah. And yet they are two industries that that are really made for each other. Yeah, it's. Uh, I do a lot of monitoring of the news and the ability for somebody to send a link to the Thai version of the story on John Horgan, bang, like that, you're there. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's wonderful. Well, we, in Campbell River, we had probably one of the greatest m examples of it when Dave Reynolds was working for 99.7 The River right. and the River Relief Truck. And Dave is on hashtag Campbell River. Yeah, he, he and I put hashtag Campbell River together back oh, really? in, in 2010 huh. and when he ran that at the at his peak in town he had uh, about 10,000 followers worldwide uh, he was he was having people listen to his radio show in Germany yeah. as their afternoon drive and he was doing that because he would tweet out send me your request huh. and because the 99.7 the river was being streamed yeah a person could listen to it on internet radio. Yeah. So as a result, this person from Germany could tweet a yeah. request and hear it yeah. from this Canadian radio station. I can hear people out there saying, what's hashtag Campbell River? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, the best way to describe a hashtag is how to follow a headline. Yeah. So if you're on Google and you want to follow a headline about yeah. whatever's happening in the world, you just type in that headline. Yeah. Same thing works for a hashtag. Hashtag is actually the number sign on your keyboard. I think it's above yep. no, four, is it, on yep. the ASTF? Yeah, and so like you can have hashtag BC Poly, which is about BC politics, hashtag CDN POLI, that's Canadian politics, hashtag BC NDP is about the BC and hashtag BC Libs. So there's, I don't know, how many million hashtags out there? Oh, it's, I've lost count. Yeah. But I mean, for Campbell and you River, can make it's a new been one. great. You can make any type of hashtag. Yeah. Uh, for Campbell River, it's been great 
yeah. because it's allowed us to to show up on a global stage by people following what's going on. Yeah. Uh, businesses, especially in tourism, have started to use it a lot and has really benefited. Eagle Eye Adventures, for one, has done an amazing job yeah. with their social media presence. I think they passed yeah. something like 25,000 likes now on their yeah. Facebook page. But hashtag Campbell River, I mean, you know, I know Dave started it a long time ago, but it doesn't seem big. I, I think there's a lot of people that are just don't follow it. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, no. No, as a matter of fact, I actually had a person from Arkansas come up to me and say, but I, mean local I heard people. you're from Campbell River. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But in terms of Campbell River people and Campbell River businesses, how many of them are sort of like actively, they turn up in their office in the morning, they turn their computer on, they check hashtag Campbell River? Pretty minimal. Yeah. Pretty minimal. Um, Campbell River starting to get into the, into the social media stream, for want of a better word. They're, they're starting to understand that, you know, this is, this is a global reach. Excuse, excuse me, Sean. I got to check my email. <laughs> I'm probably that's a joke. I'm folks. probably one of the few people that won't be offended by that. Uh, I know that when I go in to teach at yeah. uh, at schools, I, I sit there and ask them who they, who's got a smartphone, and timid hands go up, and I say, yeah. "Take it out." Yeah. You know, if you've got your head down in, in your yeah. in your smartphone and you're tweeting away, I'm good with yeah. that. I think I don't know if it was Gord, but somebody told me you can turn the vibrate off too. I had the mayor on here for the second time a few weeks ago, and. Uh, it was sitting here on the, and it started going, eh, eh, eh. so. <laughs> I, right, right now I'm, I'm either getting a lot of messages or I'm having a heart attack, I'm not quite yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, uh, Owly, uh, I think you use that quite a bit. I do, uh, Owly is actually a tool within Hootsuite that allows okay. you to shorten links. Oh, it's in Hootsuite. It's and, built right into Hootsuite. Okay, and yeah. is that like Bitly? Yeah, it works the same way. As you can take an extremely long link yeah. and shorten it down. Yeah. So rather than going to Bitly and, and pasting it in and shortening it, Hootsuite will do that automatically and it will oh. give you the opportunity to actually make a choice between using the, the hourly uh, shortened link or even a custom link. Yeah. Um, this is one I didn't warn him about. Uh, <laughs> VI Hippie Chick cites Sean's ADD. Oh, yeah. What's all that about? Social media is designed for people like me. Squirrel. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're so easily distracted. Yeah. And there's so much happening online that it's, it's easy for us to bounce back and forth. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, like my interviews, I jump yeah. around all over. VI hippie chick, Jennifer, is, is great. She and I share a commonality with, with dealing with mental illness. I suffer from clinical depression, as does she. And uh, so we have these great conversations mm -hmm. online. You know, have you taken your medication today? Well, everybody's still alive, so I'm going to say <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, uh, another thing, uh, the uh, reach of Twitter, uh, mention reach. Now, you, you told me online last night that you do a lot of outsending, tweeting, mm -hmm. um, and that helps, of course, your retweet frequency as well. But what, tell, me, tell us a bit about uh, mention reach. Well, you know that old 70s hair shampoo commercial, they told two friends, who told two friends, who told two friends, who told two friends? Well, if I have 3,000 followers and I tweet out to a person who's got 10,000 followers and they retweet it, yeah. well, those 10,000 followers and my 3,000 followers are now 13,000 followers who yeah. potentially see that tweet. Right. If that ends up coming back to me, uh, you know, somebody comments back on it or they retweet it back with my name on it. Yeah. Well, that just, it continues to grow. But who runs the program that uh, monitors that and can calculate it? Oh, there's, there's all kinds out there. So it's not, it's, is it Twitter's compu computers or somebody no, else's? No, it's, it's usually independent, but what it does is it takes the data that is, is available from Twitter and okay. pulls it into, uh, into a larger okay. uh, analytic. Yeah. So applications like Sprout Social, applications like Hootsuite have analytical data available yeah. for reporting purposes. And I hand yeah. that over to my And client that's like the that. website you can tell where your hits are coming from. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, I mean, a lot of it is, is subjective. Um, yeah. I know that a lot of people are into how many people are talking about their Facebook yeah. page. But yeah. that analytic has changed quite a bit over the last yeah. couple of years. Here's another good question. Um, uh, there's something about a word cloud and then there's also cloud computing. Yeah, word, word cloud is just words. In, in a little okay. thing that looks like a cloud. But that's with the biggest, most frequently repeated word in larger print. Correct. 
and that's where your your name out of the Victoria Media yeah, I camp. Talk a lot. <laughs> you you had the the equally biggest of one other person presence. Uh, yeah, Bosco Anthony, who's a, a, a business strategist, very yeah. good business strategist. Yeah. Uh, at Bosco Anthony is his, is his yeah. Twitter handle, and he was great. Uh, he had probably about 450 mentions of his name. Yeah. Uh, I was just a hair under 200. So I mean, there was there was a lot of traffic, but like I said, I talk a lot. Yeah. So it's not necessarily talent. It's uh, also your content is is a really big play here. Yeah. I mean, what you're con what you're talking about. I get people saying to me, I don't want to get on Twitter because I don't care what you had for breakfast. That's Facebook. And Facebook too. Well, fa uh, Twitter doesn't do birthdays. No, not birthdays, but what you had for breakfast. I okay, mean, that's yeah, yeah. that's a popular one on Twitter. Well, I don't follow people that do that. Yeah, and I don't. I don't either. I don't care. Yeah. But there are a lot of relevant conversations that happen, and if you yeah. know how to use the tool, you can access a lot of really yeah. great content. Yeah. And what's cloud computing? Uh, cloud computing is everything. It, think of it as a hard drive that's not in your house. Yeah. That Bill Gates runs. And that Bill Gates and. Google owns and yeah. Facebook owns yeah. and everybody else has so a So I have a very decent. large music library. Does that mean I can, like Google, starting a, a, some kind of a new music service now? Yeah. And I can export that whole library and they'll hold it for me? Yeah. In perpetuity? In perpetuity. For free? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you've, you're confusing free with non-business. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, there, there are free accounts. Uh, Dropbox is one I use constantly huh. for, for data but if you want to go beyond five gigabytes yeah. then you yeah. gotta pay. Um, I gather when you're coaching you don't do it for free. No. No. <laughs> no. I used to do free. I used to do free a lot um, yeah. but that was based out of passion for what I do. Yeah. I love what I do. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time when somebody comes to have a bill paid you know <laughs> yeah. they don't take passion. Yeah. I was shocked. I was yeah. surprised. Do you do uh, do you handle DNS attacks? In other words, if let's say there's a person in town whose business got flamed or whatever, yeah. you, the, the old jargon. Can you, know, you help them or is that that's Well, you see, this is, this is where I come in on, on the social media side as a connector. I know people who can do that. I, I know lots of people and I, yeah. I'll, I'll gladly connect them with the yeah. right people. And that's, yeah. that's part of the reason why I was showing up so well at social media camp was I spent a lot of time connecting people to other people, yeah. people that have never met, creating introductions between businesses and small business users. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how easy is it to pr report somebody as an abusive spammer and get them blocked and or named in spam filters? And I will give Hootsuite one on this one. Yeah? Hootsuite has a really good spam reporter uh, of users that are misusing. Oh, that's good. It's, because it's a single I, click. I, I have some evidence, I, well, at least anecdotal perhaps, but where political parties will report their enemy as a spammer, yeah. and therefore when somebody goes to that website, there's a sign that comes up, this is a dangerous site, are you sure you want to go there? Yeah. That's, that's dirty. That's not uncommon. It's that, not that's uncommon. not uncommon at all. Uh, you know, I get it within my own industry. In, in, in our world, in social media, we call them trolls. Yeah, uh, and it's it's not an uncommon practice. It's now, bitterness online. Troll is a pretty generic word. Uh, how do you define it? Uh, a troll is somebody who engages you in conversation for no other reason than to get a rise out of you, huh. uh, and so that they get seen. Huh. And that's that's a, it's becoming a real issue in a lot of places. I heard there's also people that will follow people they don't like so that they can get an argument going with them. Absolutely. And that's, that's not and that's, trolling, though. Well, no, that's that's along the same lines. Okay. Uh, but it's it's in any way that they can jump into somebody who is having a strong, powerful presence in social media and leverage that to create a presence for themselves. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we got time, we'll go back maybe to a few other social media things. But I wanted to. Uh, you're the uh, parade marshal for the Remembrance Day parade. Yep. Yeah, and Campbell, you've been doing it for how many years? Oh, I, I've done it four of the last six. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's something that I I love to do. It's you know being a veteran myself and from a long history of veterans, about ten yeah. generations worth of silly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's something that means a great yeah. deal to me. Now I got a picture in here. You're wearing a blue beret, so you yeah. were a peacekeeper. 
I did a tour in Cyprus in 1988, uh, exactly 25 years to the day that my dad did his in the Belgian Congo. Wow. It literally flew out on the exact same day. And I know from Philosopher's Cafe you had some tough times there. Yeah, yeah, there's a, uh, yeah. You don't want to go there? No, not okay. really. No, I'm not on TV. Okay, let's switch gears. I uh, didn't warn Laura that our chats are going to do this. I'll read the headline. Mayoral supporter lambastes council. So you're supporting Mayor Jakeway. Uh, yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> a verbal lashing from resident Sean Smith at Tuesday's council meeting. You were giving the Strathcona... Uh, Oh, it, oh, the council's decision to exclude Jakeway from the Strathcona Regional District Board prompted a verbal lashing at council by Sa Sean Smith. Yeah, I've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other Sean Smith. In That's town. the other Sean Smith. I, I have no idea who that is. Yeah. I, I mean, the one thing, and this works in my business as well, uh, is my, my wife tells me constantly the reason I get frustrated is because I'm thinking five years ahead of everybody else. Uh, and I was developing websites in town when nobody wanted a website. Yeah. Now they all have websites and they don't want to do social yeah. media. Yeah. Um, and Walter, although he's a bit of a bull in the china shop, well, he's a lot of a bull in the china shop, at the same time, his ideas are, are not really out of the realm of complete logic. Pragmatic, I think. It's is pragmatic, a, yeah. to be sure. I mean, we're dealing with a person who is used to dealing yeah. with multi-million dollar budgets, large infrastructure, and lots of people. It's not the first time he's been to a dance. No, it's not. And, yeah. and I find it, I've always found it funny that somebody who has a master's degree in finance is looked at as being wrong when talking about finance at the, the city level. Yeah, the staffing is too large, the taxes are too I, high. But I, I, what does he know? When, when the person who has a, a degree in human resources tells the mayor who has a master's degree in finance that he's wrong about yeah. the finances, there's something wrong. So are you going to run for council in the fall? No. No? No, no I'm not. I know there's, there's been a lot You take a pay cut to run for council. There, there's a lot of people who have been asking if I'm going to run, but uh, uh, you know, I've got a, a growing concern in, in the social yeah. media sphere. You've still got young family. kids, right? Yeah, my, my children are 13 and 7. Yeah. Uh, well, my oldest will be 13 soon. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the frustration that I have does not lie just with the council. There's a much larger infrastructure issue. Yeah. And do I want to bring that home? Uh, do I River Corp. That, do I want to bring that to my business? <laughs> uh, yeah, we won't get into that one. But... Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm still a big supporter of my community. I still believe yeah. wholeheartedly that this is the best place to live yeah. ever. Yeah. I mean, I, I left the Army four years short of retirement to stay here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's John Twig's favorite curveball question. <laughs> what didn't I ask that you wanted to talk about? Security and safety on social media. Yeah. Um, Cyberbullying is, is a huge thing for me. Uh, I, I talk about it all the time, and if, if I had anything to pass on to, to people who are using social media, particularly to parents, is understand that the digital footprint of a person now starts between 11 and 12 years old. Oh, it's, I uh, think it's earlier than that. Well, I mean, there are people that are using it earlier, and they shouldn't be. I mean, the rule is that 13 years old is the age. Yeah. that you're allowed to get social media accounts. Huh. But there are parents who are letting their kids do it much oh, sooner. I've seen, I've seen accounts ba babies for, have account. for kids in grade four who are doing social media on a regular basis. Yeah. But for me, um, I cannot seem to wrap my head around why a parent would make sure that their child goes out wearing a helmet to go ride a bike, yeah. but they'll hand them a smartphone and say, go, yeah. have fun. Yeah. And to me, that's like handing them a grenade. Yeah. They're, they're going to experiment with that thing until yeah. it blows up in their face. Yeah, I'm thinking of all sorts of rock songs about teach your children, Yeah, stuff like that. Well, Sean, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you for having we me. We could have had a debate with a mainstream media guy, but you know what? I think we did better without him. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a debate and a little That's bit more a of a merry somebody, fight. By the way. <laughs> all right, time to wrap. So thank you, volunteers. Thank you, viewers. Thank you, Chaz and Marjorie here at Shaw. Um, Talk about, yes, we're on YouTube. Uh, you heard of that? Yeah. I've heard something about it, the yeah. videos. I think, I, yeah, you can see videos. And there's a list of all of the shows that we've done on my website, www.crnv.com, and Shaw TV North Island also has all of this stuff too. So once again, thank you everyone, and thank you especially for watching.
We'll be back.